I'm Edward Andrews and I'm part of the team who conduct worship in the linked charges of St. Michael's Parish Church, Dallas, Rafford Parish Church and St. Leonard's Parish Church, Fife, Moray, Scotland. Welcome to our online service wherever and whenever you're joining with us. As we get near the end of the church year, the Gospel reading tells us of the journey of Jesus and the disciples to Jerusalem. It also shows us that even when Jesus was with them, the disciples still didn't do a great job of understanding what the message of Jesus was really about. If the disciples in the presence of Jesus were able to get things so wrong, it's little wonder that we too keep on getting things wrong. One of the areas which I see as vital for the people of God at the minute is that we look carefully at what Jesus actually said rather than what people have written about him. The strongest thing which Jesus states is his demand that people who become great will become servants. However, we develop this with theophany from Job 38 and the reflections on the high priests in Hebrew 5. So let us join in worship. As the spirit and advanced electronics join us together, so God is with us. The one who etches grace on our hearts. It is in the world for which Christ died that God will transform us into disciples. We glorify our God who yearns for justice, not just for a favoured few, but for the least of our companions. It is in the world for which Christ died, where God will write compassion in our souls. So we give thanks to God for unceasing grace. We remember God's persistence in building a relationship with him and making us the people whom we have the potential to be. It is in the world for which Christ died where God will breathe the word into our lives. So let us worship God. Let us sing hymn 36, which is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength. Let us pray. Lord our God, King of the universe, in the beginning you made all things out of nothing, with no help and no tricks, but with lots of love. You were there as the universe grew, as light exploded 
and forces broke free as atoms emerged and stars flamed with brilliance. Your love made the earth, the high mountains and rolling plains, the churning rivers and deep oceans. With green and gold and blue, you brought colour to the world, shimmering in the sunlight. You made grass and softness, trees and shade, flowers and fragrance. You made animals, the giant dinosaur and the itchiest flea, the scampering hamster and the water spouting whale. And Lord, in your ingenuity and strength, you made us in your image, vulnerable and fragile, capable of great things and able to love all that you have made. Mighty and merciful, mer powerful God, you are a caring Father, evolved in our life and our growing. We praise you. Eternal God, who can speak from a storm or a still small voice, we do not pray in order to alleviate our guilt, but to express our gratitude to you, for we know all the things we have said and done that we shouldn't, and all the words we should have spoken, all those actions we should have undertaken but didn't. Despite such lives, you still love us, surrounding us with the mercy and hope, waiting to restore us to new life. Creation's heart, we look around and see how we fall short in our attempts at faithfulness. We often do things not because it's what you call us to do, but in hopes of earning points with you. We can become so self-absorbed, we cannot see the suffering and struggle of friends and strangers. We're so desperate to get to the front of the queue, we push aside the very ones you seek to honour. Forgive us, Holy One. Remind us that the cup we are offered overflows with grace, that the waters of baptism cleanse and make us new and that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, is the one who calls us to service, standing by our side as we seek to be faithful disciples. The one who poured the foundations of creation fills us with grace and hope. The one who numbered the clouds tips over rain barrels of living water into our part souls. The one who writes anthems for the early morning stars fills us with songs of joy. The one who provides food for all living things feeds us with mercies which come fresh and new each day. Thanks be to God we are forgiven. Loving God, as we worship you today, Lead us into the understanding of what you're calling us to do in faith and in truth. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love that all who hear it may turn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen for the word of God. First of all, it's contained in the book of Job, chapter 38, reading from verses 1 to 7 and from verses 34 to verse 41. And then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me, if you understand, who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? Or what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. 
And in verse 34, can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you, here we are? Who gives the ibis wisdom or gives the cockerel understanding? Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Who can tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clods of earth stick together? Do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions? When they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in the thicket, who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to God and wander about for lack of food? And again, listen for the word of God this time as it's contained in a letter to Hebrews, chapter 5, reading from verse 1 to verse 10. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters relating to God to offer gifts and sacrifice for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes this honour on themselves, but he receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, You are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submissions. Son though he was, he learnt obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. The gradual is part of Psalm 104. Praise the Lord my soul, Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendour and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He sets the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with the watery depths as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. But at your rebuke the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. But many sinners have vanished from the earth, and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. O Holy Spirit and giver of life, who from the beginning wrought beauty and peace in all creation, renew the face of the earth, that we may glorify the author and maker of all, and rejoice in the promise of redemption, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The well, Holy Gospel is found in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee,
came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at the left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Thanks be to God for his glorious gospel. It's important that we as Christians affirm the power of God. There's a danger at times when we look for the kingdom of God that we end up simply seeking to improve secular society rather than seeing that God is at the core of our motivation and that God's kingdom of justice and love is where his power breaks in. It is a power of God which is actually active in his kingdom and it is this which is experienced in this theophany of Je in Job. Now, theophany is an unambiguous manifestation of God to man. The one in Job happens after Job has challenged God to explain himself because of the suffering which Job has experienced. Then Elihu gave a sort of answer, mainly attacking Job. And then God speaks, challenging Job, basically asking Job who he thinks he is and comparing the weakness of humanity with the power of God. Yes, this is a difficult thing for modern humanity to take on board, but the Lordship of God, what is known in God language as the sovereignty of God, has to be the starting point of any real understanding of the faith. Job wanted to know why Job almost challenged God to explain the reason for his misfortune and God replies. In the reply God points out the fact that he is wholly other to us and this is something which we always have to remember as we seek to live out the faith. There's a great temptation you know for us to treat the faith as merely a superior form of humanism. As we seek to build the kingdom which is little more than a political millennialist view of how society should be. Job begins the dialogue asking, why do bad things happen to good people? A plea which echoes down the years. And he ends up asking the real question of how do I find peace with God in the middle of my suffering? It's God who truly is the power behind life, who made humanity in an act of love, and who despite our best efforts to ignore him, keeps on looking after us. It is this which is being affirmed in the Hebrews reading. In our age and with a background in the Reformed tradition, we don't immediately recognise what it's saying. There are two references to priests the high priest and the priest according to the order of Melchizedek. In Jewish tradition, 
The high priest was theoretically the religious leader of the temple cult. The person who made the sacrifice on Yom Kippur to make atonement for his own sins, the sins of the priests and of the people. And it was so important that his sins are regarded as being also the sins of the people. This high priest was a descendant of Aaron. On the other hand, a priest according to the order of Melchizedek was by definition not of Aaronic descent. Melchizedek was the king of Salem. He's first mentioned in Genesis 14, 18 to 20, where he brings out bread and wine and then blesses Abram. The whole point about him is that he was not of Aaronic descent. And this is important because neither was Jesus. Thus it is that in our readings we have the God who was holy other and Jesus who carried out the actions of the high priest but was not a priest in the Aaronic succession but of the order of Melchizedek. It's against this background that the God of the storm who spoke to Job and Jesus is the priest according to the order of Melchizedek that the two Bonagis brothers stumble. Here in Mark, the shortest of the gospel, we're simply told that it was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who came and made their outrageous request. Luke leaves out the account of who asked and simply tells that a dispute arose among the disciples while Matthew blames the whole thing on their mother. Whatever happens, we know that the incident led to Jesus telling the disciples what real greatness and the upside down kingdom of God really means. But before we get to the statement of Jesus, let us look at James and John. I think there are two things that we learn First is that even with Jesus with them, even with his warning of the passion ringing in their ears, that the disciples managed to get it so wrong. They were going to Jerusalem. We began our gospel reading in verse 35, but if we read the previous two verses, we see what the situation is. Verse 33, we're going up to Jerusalem, Jesus said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him, spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later he will rise. And this is the time when they choose to make what is clearly an inappropriate request I wonder how often we simply get our approach to serving Jesus wrong. How often do we simply ignore the real issues as we pursue what we think are our own interests? Perhaps there are even times when we go some silly way as it beats taking a hard look at the reality and we can almost have a fantasy. Jesus actually lets them down very lightly. He simply asks them if they're prepared to drink the cup he drinks or be baptised with the baptism he is baptised with. And they are, with James being the first of the apostles to be martyred, according to Acts 12, chapter, uh, verse 1. But that is in the past. What does this story say to us who seek to be the people of Christ in the 21st century and who seek to see the kingdom of God break in? We could spend time looking at James and John, the pushy too. We could also look at the other ten, the indignant ten. I wonder how they heard about the request. Or we can look at what Jesus actually said and did. Jesus speaks some of the most famous phrases in the Bible. You know that those who are considered rulers of the heathen have power over them, 
and the leaders have complete authority. This, however, is not the way it is among you. If one of you wants to be great, you must be the servant of the rest. And if one of you wants to be first, you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, he came to serve and to give his life to redeem many people. Jesus' definition of greatness has room for neither the angry ten nor the ambitious two. It focuses instead of service, not even free service in this translation, slavery, though a voluntary slavery. We must accept as a metaphor, a picture in words. He uses the Greek word servant, diakonos. And then in saying you must be the slave of all, he uses the Greek word doulos, which means a slave. There's a building emphasis in Jesus' word service, then slavery. A turning round of the ideas of leadership and of the rulers of the heathen. It isn't that we can't book good seats in heaven. It isn't even that we might get one, but we don't know which. It is instead in the whole upside down kingdom of God, where usual concepts of leaderships are turned upside down. A discipleship of service, even slavery. I suspect that at times we've all done something like what James and John did. We've wanted to be someone special. We've seen an opportunity of advancement. We've been one of those ambitious too. But it hasn't been a good idea. And now when we look back at it, I'm equally sh sure that there have been occasions as well when we've been one of the indignant ten. The people who are angry because of someone who is being pushy, perhaps getting the position which we want. If we think back to the day we asked for something we regretted, the day we were the ambitious too, how do we hear Jesus' words? Or if we think of the day when we were in the angry too, how does Jesus' call of service and even slavery speak into that moment? Here the conflict may now be within us, but a conflict of spirituality is exactly what this passage describes. I wonder if the church will ever be free of it. Will we? And it's in humility that we have to accept that we have a relationship with Christ that leads us into the upside down kingdom of God where we're called to be the servant and to live out our lives in service of the community and thus of the Master. We will now sing hymn 553, Just As I Am.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we've reflected on the vision which we're given in our readings today. Grant that we do continue to come to you in our need, remembering the mistakes which we make in our attempt to witness to you. Most High, your Anointed One offered himself freely as witness against our violence, our acts of oppression and our sins. As you de delighted to call him your son, give us the courage to bring you equal delight by our willingness to drink the cup of sacrifice on behalf of our sisters and brothers, and with them offer you praise unceasing and lives transformed as true heirs of your grace-filled realm. Loving Father, we are seeking to worship you in spirit and in truth. We bring before you our concerns for humanity. We think of the whole COVID-19 situation and we think of the people who've lost loved ones. The people are hurt and angry for what has happened to them. We think of the people who are diminished by long COVID. We pray for those who are concerned about the danger of contracting COVID for themselves or someone whom they love. We think of the whole international manifestation of COVID especially the problems of the unequal distribution of vaccines. Lord, hear our prayer and lead humanity into finding answers. We think not so much of COP26, but of the man-made mess which we've made of your creation, the reduction of biological diversity, the destruction of habitats, pollution of the environment. Then, Lord, we're surprised that the climate changes and that people flee their homes. Father, we remember that COP26 is meant to seek human answers. Lord, hear our prayer and lead humanity into finding answers. Lord, we look at a warring world, not the big wars to which correspondents are dispatched, but the small local ones where no one outside very much cares, or the conflicts which have dragged on and have left the front page, and the world suffers from compassion fatigue. Lord, hear our prayer, and lead humanity into finding answers. Remember, O Lord, that you're not just the God of the big things, of the world, of the environment, but you're the God who cares for the small things. For the individuals, we hold up before you those who are finding life difficult, those who are ill, especially those who have received difficult, different diagnoses and are struggling with disease, those who are having difficulties in their relationships, those who have economic difficulties, those who are having to choose between eating and heating. Lord, Hear our prayer and let humanity and lead humanity into finding answers. Wind riding God, the blue skies, the sunshine, the cool breezes, cradling falling leaves, all creation reminds us of the delicate artists who have shaped us and all that is around us, so we lift our songs of gratitude and awe to you. Servant calling Jesus, you humble our arrogance with your acts of mercy. You tip over our pretensions with your modest nature. You laugh at our hunger for power with your words of grace. Heart-keeping spirit, you bear our prayers to the throne of grace when they're only whispers in our souls. You unfold the roadmap to show us the way to the kingdom. You transform our stuttering words into praise and wonder to our God. God in community, holy and one, be with us in this and every moment, even as we pray as Jesus teaches us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. 
now and forever. Amen. When I sing hymn 374, The Servant King, From Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe. go on to be the servants of the community in love and faith, seeking not only to serve, but to communicate the great wonders of the faith, the love of the faithful creator, the peace of the wounded healer, the joy of the challenging spirit, the hope of the three in one. And may the blessing of the three in one, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you all today and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much for joining with us in this act of worship. God bless.